When people see that creepy smile, they end up with self-fatality like in Mortal Kombat. After a creepy encounter with a patient, a psychiatrist thinks she's being haunted. Let's dive in and see what's going on. We see a disturbing scene of a woman who has died of a drug overdose. Photos surrounding the scene show that she was a single mother raising two daughters. At that moment, her youngest daughter Rose appears in the doorway. The scene then shifts to the present day. Rose has become a psychotherapist and works in a psychiatric hospital. She takes care of a manic patient named Carl, who keeps saying he's going to die. Rose does everything she can to comfort him, but Carl keeps mumbling something, so she takes him to the hospital for a few days. After finishing her work, Rose wants to go home, but she is assigned another case involving a patient named Laura. Rose reluctantly meets her and learns that the poor girl is suffering from bouts of depression. After witnessing her professor do the unthinkable, Rose explains that it is normal to be paranoid when someone dies, but Laura insists she's not crazy. In fact, she's acting strange. According to her, a creepy creature with a strange smile follows her wherever she goes. This creature takes the form of random people and says, you are going to die. In the middle of the conversation, Laura suddenly falls to the floor and starts screaming as if she saw something. Sensing the humiliation of the situation, Rose quickly calls for help. Rose is shocked. Laura stands up straight, looking calm with a strangely creepy smile. Unfortunately, before help arrives, Laura picks up a shard of broken pottery and does the fatality, leaving Rose horrified. After this tragic incident, two detectives arrive at the hospital. One of them happens to be Joel, Rose's ex-boyfriend. They ask her some questions, but she is too scared to answer them. Rose only talks about how Laura had a creepy smile on her face when she did unthinkable. After the formalities are over, Rose finally returns home to relax. She takes a shower and gets ready to pour herself a drink. Suddenly, she notices a frightening sight, Laura standing in the corner. At the same moment, her fiancé Trevor walks in, which makes her flinch for a moment. He notices that she is very anxious and asks if she is okay. In response, Rose nods her head and quickly changes the conversation. Later that evening, the couple joins Rose's sister, Holly, and her husband for dinner at a restaurant. They all talk about their work life, but Rose seems distracted. She keeps remembering Laura's heartbreaking scene. Holly tells Rose that she forgot about her nephew's birthday, and Rose responds very rudely to her. The next day, Rose decides to return to work. She tries with all her strength to get away from the previous incidents. Intrigued, she asks the secretary to show her Gabriel's report, the professor who did the unthinkable in front of Laura. While Rose is reviewing the report, she receives a phone call from Holly, inviting Rose to her son's birthday party. At that moment, Rose looks out the window and sees Laura, but she dismisses it as a figment of her imagination and continues to test her patience. When she passes Carl's room, she is surprised to see him with the same creepy smile as Laura. Out of the blue, he starts yelling at her, telling her that she is going to die. This terrifies Rose. She urgently calls the medical staff to restrain him, but it turns out that Carl was asleep the whole time. Everything that had happened before was just a figment of her imagination. When Dr. Morgan learns of the incident, he becomes concerned about Rose's mental state and advises her to take action. Rose takes a week off. Later that night, when Rose is home alone, an alarm suddenly goes off, causing her to panic. She cautiously goes to the front door, scissors in hand, but finds it locked. Back in the living room, she finds the back door open. At this disturbing moment, Rose receives a call from a security guard who strangely tells her to look back. To make matters worse, the phone rings again, revealing that the previous call was just a hallucination. Rose quickly answers the phone. To her relief, a real security guard is on the other end of the line. In no time, several officers arrive at her home to investigate and find no sign of a break-in. Trevor also arrives and worriedly asks Rose if she is okay. With a confused look on her face, she says yes. But there's still a problem. She can't seem to find her cat anywhere. Over the next few days, Rose continues to have hallucinations. This leads people to believe that she's mentally unstable. <laughs> Concerned for her well-being, she turns to her former therapist, Dr. Madeline. Rose tells her about everything, including Laura, her creepy smile, and even her missing cat. She desperately says that she is becoming more paranoid by the day. Hearing all this, Dr. Madeline suspects that she is still suffering from the traumatic death of her abusive and mentally ill mother. Later, Rose attends her nephew's weekend birthday, even though she's not feeling well. The first few minutes go well, and Rose assumes she has gotten rid of her hallucinations. But then her nephew opens the present she brought him, and inside is the lifeless body of her missing cat. This shocking revelation leaves Rose in tears and desperate to convince 
everyone that she didn't do it. In the midst of all this, she notices that one of the party guests is smiling creepily at her. This scares Rose terribly. She ends up breaking the glass table and falling. After a short trip to the hospital, Trevor takes her home. Before getting out of the car, Rose tries to confide in him about the creature that follows her. But Trevor suspects that she may have inherited her mother's mental illness. He just keeps escalating the situation. Later, Rose continues her research on Gabriel until she hears her mother's voice calling out in the dark. Determined to ignore it, she tries to go to bed, but behind her appears a figure that resembles her mother. In the morning, Rose goes to Gabriel's apartment to find out more about his death. She is met by the professor's wife, Victoria, who informs her that the professor also witnessed that creepy smile before committing fatality. She then takes Rose to a room where several of Gabriel's sketches are displayed. They all have the same creepy smile on their faces. Rose claims that Gabriel was not crazy and that the experiences he went through were real. She says she's going through the same thing. Unfortunately, this only upsets Victoria. The widow thinks Rose tries to make fun of her late husband. She throws Rose out of her house. Now that she has no choice, Rose turns to her ex-boyfriend and asks for a favor. Investigate cases related to Gabriel. Joel hesitates a bit but agrees to do it to preserve their past relationship. Joel reviews the reports on his laptop and discovers that the professor witnessed a woman named Angela committed the unthinkable. He then does similar research on this woman and accidentally discovers that she also witnessed that creepy smile. Later, Rose returns home with the intention of telling Trevor everything. However, her plans are ruined when she discovers that Trevor has brought Dr. Madeline to check on her. He thinks she has lost her mind. This infuriates Rose and she accuses Trevor of abandoning her in her time of need. Then she takes off and goes to Holly, hoping to get some support from her. Rose impatiently shows her sister a printed picture of the other victims and explains how she got her patient's curse. But Holly rejects the idea of curses and compares Rose to her late mother. This causes a wave of anger within Rose that has reached a tipping point as everyone around her is constantly lashing out at her. As a result, she scolds her sister, calling her self-centered and selfish. Rose then walks back to her car and tries to calm down. Suddenly, Holly comes out of the house and knocks on the car window. When Rose looks outside, her sister's head inexplicably turns upside down. Later that night, Rose sits in her car and eats hamburgers. Suddenly, she gets a phone call from Joel. He says he has been studying these creepy smiles all night and has learned something shocking. A total of 20 such cases were recorded, and 19 of them were fatalities with patterns. However, in the 20th case, a man named Robert broke this pattern by committing murder. When a random man witnessed the incident, he did the unthinkable, thereby continuing the same pattern of behavior. Intrigued by this survivor, Rose decides to meet him face to face. Shortly thereafter, they arrive at the prison where Robert is being held. Rose approaches him and pretends to have a patient going through a similar ordeal. In response, Robert explains that the entity feeds on trauma and the only way to escape is to commit a brutal fatality in front of a witness, traumatizing him. When Rose hears this, she becomes furious. She screams, I can't kill anyone. In doing so, she inadvertently reveals that she has been cursed by this entity. As a result, Robert begins to panic, so the guards quickly arrive and take him away. Later, when Rose returns home, Dr. Madeline pays her a surprise visit. A conversation conversation ensues between the two, which is soon interrupted by a phone call. Rose reluctantly answers the phone. She discovers that the caller is none other than Dr. Madeline herself, and her voice doesn't sound like a text-to-speech voice. This means that the person sitting with her is this entity. Entity begins to smile and shows its true face. It says the right words. Time is running out. After the incident, Rose goes to the hospital armed with a knife. She goes straight to Carl's room and confronts him. Just then, Dr. Morgan enters and warns Rose that she shouldn't be around patients. He asks if she's doing well these days. But ignoring all that, Rose suddenly pulls out her Arabian dagger and draws the scoreboard on Carl several times. It's as if she wants to break the curse by killing the poor guy. However, despite several scratches, Carl continues to smile at her. Rose wakes up in her car and realizes that the whole scene was another hallucination. Soon after, Morgan approaches her car and asks why she's here, noticing the presence of a knife in the car. But she hurries away without any explanation. Morgan immediately contacts Joel and informs him of the situation. She goes to the abandoned house of her childhood because it is the only place she can be away from people. Rose is afraid that she will end up hurting someone, so she wants to isolate herself from the rest of the world. Upon arriving at the house, Rose hears a strange noise, and when she goes to investigate, she discovers her mother. Rose remembers when her mother died. It turns Turns out that the woman was still alive when Rose found her. However, the little girl
girl did not call for help because she hated her cruel mother and wanted to get rid of her. The creature takes on a different form in its rage, revealing a large, fearsome figure. It quickly attacks Rose, pinning her to the ground. It claims it will haunt her forever, but Rose summons all her inner strength and manages to free herself by hitting the creature with a lamp. Rose leaves the house, symbolically releasing her trauma. After an agonizing ordeal, Rose returns home to Joel, hoping that he will let her spend the night. Joel agrees to take in the poor girl. As he speaks, an eerie smile appears on his face. An alarmed Rose leaves the house in a hurry. She finds herself still standing in front of her old house. This means that her previous experience was a complete hallucination. Soon after, the real Joel clicks on her name, causing her to have a panic attack. She rushes back into the house and barricades herself inside to prevent the curse from spreading to Joel. Just then, the creature removes its human face to reveal its true form. This sight causes Rose to have a nervous breakdown. As a result, she falls into a state of paralysis caused by the trauma. The creature enters her body through her mouth. In the final scene, Joel manages to break through the front door. He sees Rose playing with kerosene and with a match. With a smile on her face, she effectively transfers the curse to him. Thank you watching folks, hope you liked it. You can check another interesting recaps in the channel. Don't get left behind. Join me for best movie recaps. Hit that subscribe button, follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Goodbye till the next recap.